Well, I'm leaving because I just got hit five times. Oh, don't! Go away! Go, babe. Ow! Ow! I got stingers all in me. Hello! <laughs> We're making tomato trucks. All right, so we got the T-post in. Now we're going back and putting the T's on top. You can see Jeff running down, putting the T's on top. We're gonna put the conduit between the T's and use the couplings to connect them together. And then that's gonna be our trellis for our tomato plants. Part of it, most of it. Uh, they didn't have the right size T's, so we got the big dumb T's that look kind of silly, but whatever, they're about the same price. We didn't have to wait, wait. for them to come in, so. We couldn't wait, so. Okay. Next step. I'm tired. Jason was not built to drive T-posts. Jessica can't drive T-posts. I found one positive thing about clay though. It's like those real soft, squishy things when you stand on your feet all day that they put on the floor so for you to walk on so your feet don't hurt so much. That's about it though. It looks so official now, doesn't it? Yeah, it almost looks like we've got a gardener. So our tomatoes kind of live, but they're terrible. They are in bad, bad shape. We're if we let them, them off. yeah, we're going to pull them off. Unfortunately, rain is fighting us every step of the way. We come out here and did this. The ground is still too wet, but we had to get this in because there's rain coming and a lot of it. So it's a good problem to have, but it's still a problem. Hopefully we'll get some tomatoes in by this weekend. I don't know that we will, but we'll try. We're going to try. The juvenile chicks have been officially freed. They do this thing on the door, though. <laughs> that's one of the uh, the no, that's one of the babies. Okay, that's I was the, like, that's a hen, but I mean, no, it, that's the rooster banny, isn't it? The one sitting next to her. There's a uh, Rhode Island red. And yeah, then, uh, it might be. I don't know. I think that's the banny rooster. Anyway, they blocked that doorway, so then the other other kids can get in. Frank has accepted them, I guess, because they're living together now. <clears throat> what we did, well, Jenna and Mom took some chicken wire and cut off this area just so they can't walk directly through. And so they gave these guys some time to get out and these guys time to get used to them being out. And now they're flying over and jumping over and stuff, visiting. So it seemed to work. Look at Henry's babies. <laughs> Those are not Henry's babies, guys. Those are Frank's babies. Frank, did you have all the ladies? Look at him. He's a stud. Of course he did. He's a good rooster. He is a good rooster. He's protective, but not too protective. And he, he mates well, often. Anyway. We still haven't been able to plant our tomatoes. They're now about two foot tall in cups. Um... What we do have, though, is what a is like a <laughs> geographic map of water flow. <laughs> it's growing, though. Our stuff is growing like crazy. Our the, cabbage, the cold stuff. Cauliflower. Broccoli. broccoli kohlrabi. Kohlrabi is all, it's all doing there. pretty well. Our tomatoes actually lived. A lot of them did. They are poor specimens, but. What did I say they look like, babe? I don't remember. What did you say? Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Oh, she. Yeah. <laughs> Dwindles down into the sand and looks pitiful. Yeah. So we are uh, drilling holes with the post hole digger to 
to plant the tomatoes in. Um, our tomatoes live through the frost, but they're in rough shape. Um, and it's, God, what is it? It is Friday, April 30th, and we're just now planting our tomatoes. But our tomatoes are two foot tall, and they got flowers on them already. They're plants. Uh, but we're just doing this. We're going to drill them, plant them, get strings, and get them tied up. Um, and we're going to put it on time lapse so you guys can see it. Maybe it'll help you. We don't know if it's going to work. Um, I think this will be a good idea to be able to plant them really deep. Uh, we're going to pull the bottom sets of limbs off, set them deep, plant them, put a uh, mushroom compost in the hole with them to help uh, loosen up that clay and not let it compact so much. And hopefully we'll get a good crop this year. We'll see. <laughs> I really like this system. Um, again, we kind of took what Josh Statton did, Trellis to Make You Jealous, um, and it came together. We're doing a little different, but it Just came together yeah. and it looks good. It works good. It, it's sturdy. It's holding the plants up well. We're going to use it for the cucumbers too. We drill a hole for the tomatoes. We peel a couple of limbs back and we plant them as deep as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, we put a landscape staple in the ground, which is a six inch staple tied to a piece of string. And then we tie it to the, the conduit and then we wrap the tomato plant around the string. So it just stays up. And then as it grows, it'll just... And then um, it'll, it'll go up and then it'll kind of go over the conduit and so they're come six down foot the tall, other side. And these are indeterminate tomatoes, so they'll mm -hmm. keep growing. Um, as long as we keep well, the heat off of them. them. The, eventually blight or the late season will get to them, but they keep producing all year instead of just producing one crop. But with that being said, they produce fruit at different places they keep moving up. So we gotta keep the vines uh, trimmed and pruned with this me method, a little more work, but you get a few more tomatoes for a longer season. These are our finished tomatoes. Oh my God. Why is there a dirt, a dirt row in between, they ask? Because we had to take the paper off. <laughs> the fabric, I call it paper all the time. Anyway, we're gonna put peppers there. And we're gonna put peppers in that one over there too. And then cucumbers in that last one. We finally got them in now, oh my God. So, she's gonna wet Anyway, this is where our extra tomato plants are going that we haven't sold or planting. Or are planting, whatever. These girls and boy love them tomato plants. Hmm. Yes, yeah, see, that's good stuff. The juvenile chickens don't know what to do with green stuff. <laughs> hey, yeah, they're trying it, but they're like, what is that? What is it, babies? It's been a good week. It's been busy. I'm exhausted. I'm tired, I'm ready to go in and take a shower and pass out. Well, we have at least 60% of our plants in the ground, I'd say, at this Ooh. point. Tomorrow we've got peppers, 300 peppers. But they're, the problem with the, the tomatoes is they got too big. We have 24 inch plants and solo cups. <laughs> well, we had no option. And our, our little room back there. And it froze and then it's been wet since, since then, so we're, God, we pushed and we really. just killed our, I mean, we were just pulling up our We killed the old plants. ones. The, some of them made it through the, the freeze, but we just went ahead and pulled them because they, they look awful. They look awful. And it would be a struggle. They probably wouldn't produce very well, so yeah. just getting rid of them. Um, we still have a lot of tomato plants left. We're feeding a lot of them to the chickens. It's just they're unwieldy. Our, I'd say 30% of our plants we're planting already have flowers on them. <laughs> yeah, they were getting flowers in the greenhouse, so... And they were starting to get malnourished in soil blocks because they were so they're 18 inches in a two inch. In a little baby block. block like this big. 
So it's good we got that done. The peppers are right size, um, yep. so that'll go fast. They're still um, small, but... And cucumber for planting from seed, we gotta get that done. We might do that tomorrow. We're a little bit late on this. But, but yeah. Good okay. progress. It's amazing when the weather cooperates, what we can get done in a day. It went yeah. a lot faster than we thought. And we went back, I don't know if you guys saw it, but the, we're trying out the, the gas-powered post hole digger. Um, oh, yeah. With a two inch attachment on it. We go down, I don't know, how deep you think? Probably eight inches? Yeah, I was going to say six to eight. But... Um, and just it's... to give the, it's like basically creating a, a pot a in the ground for, yeah. the, for the roots to grow. Around. And it makes it easier for us to get them in the ground. Like, it's a nightmare to have to dig each one of those holes. It's not easy. It's clay, so you, it's, it's difficult. Planting tomatoes this time was way easier than it was the first time. And we expanded all the holes. We learned a lesson from that. We used a normal little soup can to burn holes in it, and it's just really not enough room to plant. It's and not do big what enough room, yeah. So what did we use? We, we used, used a the, crushed tomato, like 28, 28 yeah, bigger, ounce can. And man, that's it made a lot of difference. Oh, it made it a lot that's easier. That's kind of funny. To grow. Crushed tomato can to make our tomato holes ah. bigger. Oh. <laughs> Smoke. What is it, baby? Smokey. Smokey, what? Where are you going? Oh, it's gonna get ya. Smokey. Oh. <laughs> Getting these little bees, cleaning up one of their sisters. Something you don't get to see very often, so she's probably either got honey on her face or something they just don't like that they think she needs to not have on her face so they're licking it if you can see their little tongues coming out and cleaning her off it's really cute um, we got a lot of footage of bees we've lost two swarms this week um just us not paying attention it's it happens we should have been on top of things a little better mm -hmm. um, it's 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 my fault more than anything because i probably should have been in them i was thinking once a week would be enough but it's not so I went out was it yesterday. It is if you pay attention. You just, you gotta, you gotta I'm be learning. diligent. I'm yeah. learning. All the lessons I've learned so far will pay off. But I went out yesterday and went through every single one of them. Destroyed all the queen cups that needed to be destroyed and, and split them. And they're all, I think, where they need to be. We're going to get some clean stuff. Yeah, we've got them set up with queen cells or closed. They, all of our splits have closed queen, queen cells. cells. Yeah. But that's a month wait, right? By the time the queen's done, she goes out and gets bread and she starts laying. It's, it's 30 days. So, so I wanna... talked to my friend that's coming back from Texas. He's a big uh, operator. He does commercial. And if he comes in, I can get some coins from him this week. And if not, I may have to go somewhere else. We just I just want to get some production out of them this year. We have a lot of bees, but with them swarming and splitting, we don't have a lot of time to let them get established and start laying again for the honey flow. Honey flow is almost here. So yeah, we've lost a weeks. lot of production with those swarms, but still, instead of waiting, we want to get them built up and get them strong going into the dirt after the, the flow. So yeah, that's why we're choosing to not raise our own queens just to give them and shannon's got some really nice queens so yep uh, we've we're working on two cutouts with the bees we got a swarm this morning we bought 10 boxes of comb drawn comb, boxes, with 10 with boxes drawn comb, drawn yeah. comb. we made a lot of progress today yeah. i got stung about five times i'm sure you'll get to laugh about that i got stung once that's not on camera though um Oh, you're making my, yourself bleed. Look at your. So face. for you guys that I'm not bleeding, that's my right palate. there. Oh, bee stings hurt, but they hurt. They for hurt minute, for like a second. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes they don't even hurt. It's the, the it's shit the, part of bee stings is the, the itch. The, the next itch. day, the next couple of days, it it's swells two and days. Itches. Oh. It's, it's two days of solid, just like you ever had a tattoo. And it's healing. It ain't even close. No, but that. listen, it's that, but like times ten yeah. all the time, not just every once in a while. 
you get the Benadryl cream and you're just rubbing the anyways, they I itch. Sure it's the know. itching that's the worst part. It's I've way itched worse myself than the to blood. It's the itching that dry it'll wake you up at night. And yesterday we were out there and I went out and we were looking at it. It didn't even click because we we're in a there's no sign of a queen. There's no eggs. There's some queen cup or queen cells, but they're not closed. And I'm not peeking, I don't have I have my bell on, but I've you know open and they get a little cranky when they don't have a queen and it didn't even click and one hit me. And I started walking, and man, they just all, like five bees hit me like right in the same. I've never had that happen. I've had them come after me before, but never just we like have footage. my left hand. And then I'm walking around talking, not paying attention. I got five stingers stuck in me just pumping venom in, and I didn't get them out quick enough. You don't get them out quick enough. It's worse. That's when it itches. Because so the little gland sits there and goes... And squirts the venom into I don't think your. It pumps like it, a heart. Not like a heart, but it <laughs> it does that. <laughs> Just thumb with a anyway, heart. Anyway, it moves and it pumps the. So I'm going through all the hives <sighs> because we've had some swarms of ours leave, and we want to make sure there's no. Um, queen cups that they're making to encourage swarming and we want to make sure they're doing okay and they've got you know room and blah 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 all that kind of stuff so I'm out there checking everything I have checked half of them already I've had to add boxes to two of them because they were doing so well they're not overcrowded but they are about to have a bunch of brood hatch and then they will be so in anticipation of that we're putting boxes on the top I've developed a system for marking how they're doing <laughs> I might get a kick out of this so I have sticks. If they have a stick, that means I saw the queen with my eyes, they're doing well, like I got all the queen cubs, we're good. I'm also using horse poo, because we live in the country and you gotta use what you got. We don't have any, any rocks readily out here in the pasture. So if it has horse poo on it, then that means signs of a queen. I didn't actually see the queen or there is a queen cell that's about to hatch a queen. is we have three that are very healthy have a queen doing well have room now good and then we have six that have queen cells and will have a queen soon I had to take one really big one and I could split it into two other ones so it actually made three because there were enough queen cells for me to do that <laughs> So hopefully those queens will come out and go breed and then come back and they'll be successful hives too. And it'll all happen very quickly. So I'll probably be out here at least every once a week, if not once every five days or so to check on them and make sure. As you can see, they're not happy with me. <laughs> Bees that don't have a queen tend to be a little more restless. Um, so the ones that I got into that don't have a queen are just really upset with me for messing with their hive because it's already fragile as it is and they don't want anything else messing with it either so I don't blame them so hopefully when all those queens get out and go mate that we then we will have 12 hives no 10 10 hives back to 10 which is kind of where we started before winter came so we went down to four so we're working hard to make them grow and after they grow to these 10, I kind of want to let them build so then we can have some honey. Because if we keep splitting them, we won't get as much honey. So get this, I come home from work and my wife is out back doing bees. Isn't that cool? I'm going to help her do bees. Pretty excited. Well, we lost a swarm today, so that sucks. That's probably why she's out there. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Are they um, all like this one or? Wow, well, this one looks like it's got what, three frames of bees? Yeah, this one is very, very small compared to the rest of them. Anyway, listen, I'm, you don't want to finish. I'm listening. But their population was 
good, but they have like four frames double-sided of brood, so I put a box on top. Of which one? The good ones that have the queens that are doing Oh, on one, all those? That one and that one, all three of those. You put what now? I put it, well, on two of them anyway. I put in a box on top, because when all that stuff hatches. Did you put drawn comb or just foundation? Draw, well, I just drawn comb. I used the empty ones so we had. Okay. okay because they're going to explode and I was afraid if they did they would and you said they had at least four full brood? Brood? Okay. yeah um yeah I don't know what's happening but they're coming after me I got stung twice ow leave me alone yeah duh stupid you yeah, duh stupid yeah I just had about five bees get mad at me yeah this is a queenless hive um, and we've, how long have you been in there? Oh, 15 minutes probably. Well, I'm leaving because I just got hit five times. Oh, don't! Go away! Ow. Go, babe. Here. Ow! Ow! I got stingers all in me. You got some comical footage from me. Hand, <laughs> hand me the tripod and I'll I am not coming back over there. Come over there. Damn it, they're hitting me again. Go away. I'm pretty sure those are juvenile, but I can't tell for sure. They're so cute. <coughs> Hi! I was sneezing. Who are you? Pretty duckies. Anyway, I said we're not going to talk long. We're going to get off here because we've already been talking 10 minutes. So, thanks, guys. Bye. I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> I want to get my water. I'm thirsty.